let's take a look at header. Header is also a very important part of the settings here. One of the most important things we have here is our logo image. To upload our logo image, which again, if we look back on our homepage, it's going to be right here where for me it says Luma. You'll simply click upload, choose your logo file. Mine's not that fantastic, but I'm not a graphic designer, so that's my excuse. Then, then you have it there and you can change the width and height if you want to. I'm just going to stick with the width and height that I uploaded it in. Do note, there's one sort of weird thing here. Magento lists the height pixels and then the width pixels when it tells you what size it is. That's the opposite of common convention. Uh, it doesn't really mess anything up, but do keep that in mind if you're looking at this and these numbers confuse you. I'm not going to change the width or height because this logo is already the size that I want it. Then we have our welcome text. In our current theme, if we go back and look at our homepage, that's this message up here. Obviously, we want people to see something other than default welcome message. Sounds like a robot trying to talk to them. Let's just say welcome to Coffee Bean Central. Then for the logo image alt, this is the alt property of the image tag in your HTML that displays this image. Instead of Magento Commerce, usually what you're going to want to put here is, once again, just your store name. This is primarily for screen readers and a little bit for search engines too. This explains basically what this image is. This is also helpful for the very few number of users who might have images turned off on their browser. For footer, we have the option to include miscellaneous HTML. This is kind of similar to our option to include scripts and style sheets. If you know what this is, then you don't need me to explain that, what's gonna happen here. And if you don't know what this is, don't worry about it. We're not gonna get too technical here. It's probably nothing that you're gonna need to use anyway. For the copyright, we're going to want to change the copyright to our own entity, Coffee Bean Central. That is, if you want to include a copyright at all, we can just delete this if we wanted to. But I'm just going to change this to Coffee Bean Central and keep the rest of the text as it is. Now, we have pagination here as well. This has to do with how page numbers are displayed when you have multiple pages worth of items that a customer can click through. And at the bottom, you may have numbers like one through nine or one through nine, then dot, 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 a hundred. Similar to if you're scanning through multiple pages of say Google search results or uh, Amazon search results, things, things like that. This is where you can figure that stuff. We're not going to worry about this right now. We'll come back to that later in the tutorial. Then we have the option to add product image watermarks to our images. You probably know what a watermark is. If you don't, it's a faint, usually semi-translucent image that appears kind of overlaid over another image. And usually it has your company's logo or something along those lines so that if someone tries copying the image and using it somewhere else, then your logo is permanently attached to that. Then your logo is still permanently attached to that and people know where it originated from. For an e-commerce store, I recommend not using a watermark in most cases. Usually it's not really a big deal if someone happens to use an image of yours somewhere on the internet without attribution. And watermarks, by definition, will obscure your images a little bit. In e-commerce, it's extremely important that your images are as clear as possible because, there are, because they are pictures of things that people are purchasing from you. So you want them to have the best possible image. You don't want that obscured in any way. So unless there's a specific reason that you really need watermarks, again, I just recommend staying away from them. But just to show our options here, obviously for just a basic image, you'll upload the watermark image that you want to use, again, assuming you do want to use one. Then you can play around with the image opacity percentage. If you want it 50% opaque, then you would just type in 50 here. If you want it 10% opaque, then you would type in 10 and so on and so forth. You can change the size of the image. And you can also determine whether the image is stretched over the image that is being placed on or whether it's 
tiled over it or placed in the top left or the top right and so on and so forth. Then you can also have a separate watermark image and separate settings for thumbnail images. Then you have the same settings for small images. And finally, you have the same group of settings for swatch images. Swatch images are smaller images that might show variations of a product. So for instance, if you're looking at a clothing store, you might have a t-shirt that comes in three different colors. Many times, very commonly, you don't want three individual listings of the same t-shirt just pictured in different colors. A lot of the time it's more effective and more efficient to have one page for that t-shirt. And you may have seen this before where it'll have one main image of the t-shirt and then it'll have a few little tiny images below it showing different colors in much smaller images. Those are swatches where you have smaller images showing just a little piece of the main image with some sort of variation, usually again related to things like the color of the item. Finally, we have transactional emails. This is a very important area as well. Just like we have a logo for our website, it's a good idea to include your site's or your store's logo in transactional emails. These are emails that customers will receive once a transaction is placed. That makes it 100% clear where the email is coming from, and it's also just good branding. Now, I will state that in the current version of Magento, there is a little bit of a problem here where when you upload an image, it doesn't work quite right and the system gets a little bit messed up. And in order to fix it, you kind of have to go into the back end and, and rework some things manually. So I'm not gonna demonstrate that on this current build of Magento. It should be fixed very soon though. So probably by the time you're viewing this video that will be fixed, but you'll upload the image just like you did any of these other images above and the main website image. Then you have the same options here. You have logo image alt. You'd probably want to put your store name there, the width and height if you want to specify those independently from the actual dimensions of the image that you uploaded. And we're not going to get into editing header and footer templates here. That's again, a little bit more advanced than we're going to get right now. So once you've made these changes, particularly the header changes, and the HTML head changes, go ahead and click Save Configuration. Now you'll see that it's asking us to please go to Page Management and refresh cache types. So we'll click the Cache Management link, and you'll see now our configuration cache has been invalidated. That's because we've made changes to our configuration, so we need to refresh that cache. So refresh that and click Submit. And you'll notice now that if you go back to your home page and hit refresh, it's not actually any different yet. That is because, let's go back, this only flushed the configuration cache, but it didn't flush the cache of the front end of the website that it's displaying to visitors. To flush that cache, you have to also click flush Magento cache. So go ahead and do that now. Now, once that's run, now go back to your home page again and refresh. And you should have all of your settings now. Obviously, there's still a lot of work to do, but the changes we've put in place are in fact there. Notice we have our favicon. We also have our title suffix, the space pipe character space coffee bean central suffix that we told it to apply to any HTML head title. We have our real welcome message. And of course we have our real logo. So there's still a lot of work to do, but now we've begun the process of customizing this site so that it is our own store rather than a generic Magento installation.